Welcome back. Certain extremists in the Republican Party now want vengeance. We already knew that the likes of former President Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene were unhappy with the 13 House Republicans and 19 Republican senators who joined to pass the more than $1 trillion compromise infrastructure bill. The bill provides billions of dollars to improve the electrical grid, protect against cyber attacks, modernize public transit. Fringe leaders in the GOP, mad that they could lose political points if the legislation passed, began their collective temper tantrum not long after the bill cleared Congress. But now, some in the party, like Florida Congressman Matt Gates and others, are calling on House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy to punish members who worked with Democrats to pass the bill for all Americans. The question for Leader McCarthy and the rest of our conference, really, is whether or not we will allow people to be designated as Republican leaders on major committees and subcommittees while they fight for the Joe Biden agenda and against the America First agenda. Punchbowl News reported this morning that rank and file Republicans are now actually weighing whether to go through with this. And let's consider who they'd be removing from their committees. Among the House Republicans who voted for the infrastructure bill are New York's John Katko, the ranking member on the House Homeland Security Committee, and Alaska's Don Young, who holds the top Republican seat on the Natural Resources Committee. The 19 Republicans who voted for this bill when the Senate passed it in August include Mitch McConnell. So are these Republicans really willing to dump their leader in the Senate, a man who's been called the apex predator of American politics, over this vote? If this happens, it means that these Republicans are saying that bipartisanship is traitorous. Not surprisingly, President Trump's former White House Chief of Staff and former North Carolina Congressman Mark Meadows endorsed the idea during an interview with Steve Bannon this morning. Are you saying, sir, that you would strip these people of their of their committees? Uh, absolutely. Listen, they stripped Marjorie Taylor Greene of her committees for, for not even voting against the Republican Party. These people voted for Joe Biden for an infrastructure bill that will clear the way for more socialist spending that, quite frankly, uh, gives Joe Biden a win. A win, not for the American people and for the bridges that will be repaired and built, et cetera, but for political gain. The record, Taylor Greene was removed from her committees pushing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and other similar rhetoric. It had nothing to do with voting for a bill that wasn't politically beneficial to the party and everything to do with making nutty and dangerous comments. Now, Greene, who called them traitors, has even tweeted the phone numbers for the 13 Republicans who backed the bill. What happened next was sadly predictable. Just listen to part of this voicemail that was left for Michigan Republican Congressman Fred Upton over the weekend. Traitor. That's what you are. You're a piece of traitor. I hope you die. I hope everybody in your family dies. You piece of trash mother. Voted for dumb. Now, I've, I've said this before. You can disagree with portions of the bill. It wasn't enough for many Democrats who voted for it. There were issues for Republicans who voted for it as well. But the idea that these 13 Republicans are traitors to their party merely for compromising and voting for this bill, simply because most Democrats were in favor, is so dangerous for the rest of us. This is what governing is about. You have to be willing to compromise to get anything done. It's also why I was so angry at AOC and the squad on the left who voted against it as well. If party purity is now a requirement, us moderates are in big trouble. Joining us now to discuss is one of the 13 Republicans who voted yes on the infrastructure bill, New York Congressman Tom Reed. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Oh, it's great to be with you, Dan. Thank you very much. All right. So realistically, do you see uh, Republicans as a whole now taking action against your colleagues for voting for this bill? You know, I really don't see that uh, in the future, uh, but obviously I think there's some folks on a, in the party that are uh, upset uh, by our position. And, but I, and I accept that, but I will tell you, I will always vote what I think is right uh, for the district. Uh, when we worked on this bill for 10 years, 10 years, and everyone agrees on both sides of the party uh, aisles, Democrats and Republicans, that we need to fix infrastructure in America. And the only reason why you're voting against it because you don't want to give political win to the other side, you know, we're in a bad spot. Uh, we need to be better than that in Washington, D.C., and put the American people first and not fan the flames of division and also misrepresentations of the actual facts that are in this bill. Well, I, I totally agree with you. And that is why I'm so concerned about the message it would send if the mainstream Republicans, 
and whatever that means, the majority of Republicans decide that they're going to take action against the 13, including yourself, who voted for it. And I I'm, I'm think I'm relieved. Can, can I be relieved in hearing you and saying you don't think it's going to happen? Yeah, I, I think you can. I mean, I've been in uh, Washington now for 11 years and coming to the end of my tenure in Congress because of my 12-year term limit that I put on myself. And, and I will tell you that there's a lot of uh, members uh, that have been around have watched uh, Washington, D.C. for the last uh, years. And, and I will tell you, they, they understand if they go down this path, uh, this is not going to be good for the Republican Party. This will not be good for our opportunities to uh, lead in the future. And uh, I think the better uh, side of this equation will come uh, on the side of reason and temper uh, in regards to the reaction to what's uh, being driven by some of our newer members, in my opinion, who are you know just trying to play to that hard right uh, type of rhetoric. I agree. Look, Representative Reed, I am concerned that people like you, and it's not just the 13, it's there are more than that in the uh, Republicans in the Congress and in the Senate as well, are going to get bullied um, into to a point in particular in the House where people like you, you're not running for re-election, are going to step down and get out, and we are going to lose the Republican moderates in the Congress. Is that a real concern? It's obviously something I'm concerned about. That's why I've been fighting extremism um, on both sides of the aisle. Uh, there's extremism on the left side of the aisle, like you watch with AOC and the squad, for example. There's extremism on the right side of the aisle. Uh, that's why I think the silent majority of members are kind of where we are. Uh, we are at that idea of being a proud Republican, but at the end of the day, willing to put Americans first. And that should be our priority. And as we go forward, I think there's going to be more and more of the folks coming behind us uh, that will take over that mantle for people like myself. And I assure you, Dan, I'm going to work 24-7 in my post-congressional career to make sure those types of members get elected. Well, I hope so, because most of us in this country are somewhere near the middle. Most of us either identify as independents, either right-leaning or left-leaning, or are somewhat moderate. And I am just getting so nervous about what I am seeing, particularly in the Congress, with the extremes pushing agendas and forcing this purity on, on the party. But I have to say, it does seem to be right now worse on the Republican side, only because I see something like AOC and the squad, and they're not getting punished for voting against it. Um, and yet on the Republican side, they're threatening punishment, et cetera. And I'm not trying to do who's worse here, because I'm, I'm upset by, by both sides. But, but it really scares me that the power that these extremes seem to have. Yeah, it's a legitimate concern. And, and obviously that's why uh, I've stood up uh, for years now, fighting that extremism on both sides uh, of the equation. And we'll continue that fight. Uh, but I will, I will assure you uh, that there are more members that are of the silent majority that recognize, I'm a proud Republican. Our nation is still a center-right nation, in my humble opinion. And what you have to do is do the hard work of governing. Voting yes is the harder leadership position to take than voting no. I learned that early on in my career. And so I just encourage my colleagues that voted with us and those that wanted to vote with us, but because of the political uh, win, didn't actually vote yes on the bill, even though they wanted to. I can tell you, just stand up, do the right thing, and the, and the politics will take care of itself. Representative Reed, I feel better after talking to you. I, ho I hope you're right. You've allowed me to take a, a deep breath and not freak out as much. So. Representative Amen. Tom There's Reed, thank you. Ahead. <laughs> thank you for thank coming you, on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.